Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to the series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss the concept with the help of different questions. So before getting started, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group where we share some free quizzes and the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So this is another piece of information for you all. As you all know that the RBI grade B exams are quite near. So we have launched a crash course for you all which will help you prepare for these exams in a better manner. This course has been launched at a special discount offer of 40%. So you can use this coupon code and avail this discount. For further details related to the course, you can visit our website and you can fetch the details from there. So let's get started. This is the very first question which says, what does it refer to over here? So here are two statements mentioned. Let's read them one by one. The first one says, it is the primary global standard setter for prudential regulation of banks and it provides a forum for regular cooperation on the banking supervisory matters for the central banks of different countries. So what is being talked about here is about a committee or about an organization which is basically providing for the regulation of different banks. So how different banks can be regulated, what guidelines can be provided to them which they should follow for better risk management, for better supervision, better control is what this committee works for. So we have to identify it that is the primary global standard setter, that committee which is providing such standards which can help in better regulation of the banks. So what it has to do, the second statement says it issues the basal norms or accords which are the international banking regulations that help coordinate the banking regulations across the globe. So two things are being talked about over here. One is the organization which is setting certain norms and second are the norms itself that is the basal norms. So basal is basically a place in Switzerland and on the basis of that this uh, the name of this committee came from there. So basal committee is basically a committee which provides with the basal norms which makes sure that different banks in different countries are regulated in a more efficient manner. It's very important to regulate the banks in proper manner because banks play a really very important role in the financial scenario. So we have to account for the fact that banks need to be properly regulated. So this committee comes up with different guidelines, different frameworks which the countries can use and make their banking system more efficient. So the norms which these commit, this committee basically gives are known as the Basel norms or the Basel accords. So what is that basal norms or accords? They are actually the guidelines which banks should follow if they want to make their banking system more stronger. These guidelines may specify that banks should maintain this much of capital so that they can have enough capital to pay out their obligations. They have enough capital to deal with situations when they have to face any financial difficulty, any financial crisis or any financial crunch. So all these guidelines, how to deal with different risks, be it operational risk, credit risk, liquidity risk, or any other kind of risk, how to make sure better discipline is maintained in banks, they are working in more efficient manner, is all what is specified under your basal norms. So there are norms which are given, it is up to the countries if they have to follow them or not. So it's not mandatory for the countries to follow them. Some countries follow more stricter norms vis-a-vis -vis what Basel prescribes. Some countries may not be able to follow those norms. So it is up to the countries. It's not legally binding. Now, Basel norms, uh, we have three types of Basel norms. One is Basel 1, which came up in the year 1988. So they were not very efficient. So some improvements were needed. Then in the year 2004 came up the Basel 2 framework. Further, after global financial crisis, this framework was also not very useful. So came up the Basel 3 norms. So we'll be studying about all these three norms through different questions in this very session. So what uh, is basically was this question was talking about? This question talked about the committee which makes these Basel norms. So the committee is the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. 
from the very name it is clear that this committee is basically formed to ensure that banks are supervised and regulated in a more efficient manner if banks are working in an efficient manner it will automatically make your financial system more stronger one so other options are just to confuse you if you are thorough with the concept if you are clear about the committee which is into the business of giving these basel norms then you will be you will easily answer this question so the answer is option c now let's move on to question number 2 so this is the next question which says which of the following statements are correct about basel norms so i have already explained to you about the basel norms a bit introduction so this question cover those concept which i have already covered while the discussion in the first question other than that it also talks about basel 1 so let me discuss basel 1 with you all if you are thorough with the concept of basel norms you can just pause the video and answer this question yourself before going through the uh, conceptual uh, concepts which i am going to clear now so talking about basel 1 it came up in the year 1988 for better regulation of the banks so basel 1 norms focused on the credit risk now the question arises what is this credit risk so banks are basically into the business of lending that is their main means which they can use to earn something so banks are lending now those borrowers who are actually borrowing from the bank they might not be able to pay back the amount at the time of recover at the time when they have to return it so they may not, they might not be able to pay the principal amount the interest amount so banks will have to suffer in that case so in order to deal with that very credit risk these basel norms made certain recommendations for the banks so banks can follow that what was that recommendation it was to make sure that banks maintain enough capital which will help them pay for any obligation if it it arises so let me show you something so the banks must maintain So what Basel One says, Basel One says that banks must maintain capital. I am talking about capital equal to at least eight percent of the risk weighted assets. Now it's very important to incorporate the risk factor. The loans which bank is given, it is they are quite risky. So banks must maintain enough capital so that it can meet its obligations whenever they arise. so what has been the rate which is prescribed the banks must maintain a capital equal to 8% now this capital will include tier 1 as well as tier 2 capital what is the difference between tier 1 and tier 2 capital the banks use some amount for their daily functions routine functions which is basically what we are referring to when i am talking about tier 1 capital the core capital of bank which bank is using for routine functions be it paid up capital be it some kinds of reserves all those are part of tier 1 capital so it includes your paid up capital your statutory and the capital reserves the share premium etc then tier 2 capital is the supplementary capital it is not the core capital used for your regular uh, regular functions but still banks have that capital so that will include your other kinds of reserves your undisclosed reserves your capital which you are raising from different financial products and all those kinds of things so taking total of these two capitals tier 1 and tier 2 capital at least 8% should be maintained for your risk weighted assets so you will assign the weights to different assets that this one is more risky this one is less risky and accordingly you have to keep a cushion against those risk and in the, that will be in the form of maintaining more amount of capital so if you are having 10 lakh worth of risky assets at least 8% of that you have to maintain in the form of capital this is what basel 1 says its main focus was on the credit risk that how can we deal in a better manner with credit risk to so maintain this much amount in the form of capital which will act as a cushion and help you deal with this factor of credit risk now let's move back to the question and read the statements we have to identify the correct ones so the first one says till date four basel norms have been released which are collectively called basel accords these this statement is wrong we have three basel norms till now the second one says basel 1 is a set of international banking regulations put forth by the basel committee 
that sets out minimum capital requirements of financial institution with the goal of minimizing credit risk. So minimum how much capital you should maintain so that your credit risk get minimized. This was the basic objective of Basel 1 which I just discussed. So this statement is correct. The third one says that the banks must maintain capital equal to 10% of its risky assets as per Basel 1. This is wrong. We have 8% risk rate which has been suggested by the Basel norms. And the last one says that Basel norms are not legally binding for all nations. Rather, they recommend a good regulatory framework. So in the very first question only I discussed that it's not legally binding. It is up to the countries that they want to maintain the same rate or a more stricter one. So the statement which is correct is second and fourth. So the answer is option D. Now let's move on to question number three. So this is the third question. Let's have a look at it. It says which of the following statements are incorrect about Basel 2 norms? So we discussed Basel 1. Now comes up Basel 2. If you are thorough, you can answer this yourself. I am going to explain a bit about Basel 2 to you all and then we will look at these statements. So let's move ahead with these Basel 2 norms. So what is this Basel 2? Just like we had the Basel 1 regulations, Basel 2 regulations were also given by Basel committee. There are some guidelines which banks can follow for again the better supervision. So these guidelines were based on three pillars, three important things these uh, guidelines focused upon. So what were they? First pillar or first important thing which they focused on was again the capital requirement. So how much minimum capital you should maintain. So they also said that enough capital should be maintained. But the difference between Basel 1 and Basel 2 was that in Basel 1 we had just the tier 1 capital that was the core capital and tier 2 that is the supplementary capital. And this capital was to be maintained to deal with the credit risk and no other risk. But Basel 2 didn't just focus on the credit risk, it focused on other risks as well. If you are operating in a market, you have to face different market risks. If you are carrying out the business operations, then different operational risks are likely to arise. So in order to deal with such market or the operations risk, this Basel 2 came up with a third type of capital which banks should maintain, which is the short term subordinated debt covering your market risk so tier 3 capital so this capital was divided into three categories and some capital should be maintained to deal with your market risk so the basel 2 was not not just restricted to the credit risk but it also covered your market and the operational risks as well the second thing which i would like to tell you related to capital requirements is that it also incorporated the fact about the credit rating of these assets now you have to maintain some capital against the risky assets. Now those assets which are given better credit rating, against them you can maintain less capital. And those assets which are giving, given a not very good rating, for against them you have to maintain more capital. Why? Because they are more risky. Next is the Pillar 2. So Pillar 2 of Basel 2 talks about your supervisory review. How can you increase the regulatory supervision of the banks? by incorporating various other risks. So you have to account for your liquidity risk, for your legal risk, for your systematic risk. All these three or other kind of risks were basically the agenda of Basel II. It was not just restricted to the credit risk, but other risks as well and thus ensured better management of the banks. The third pillar was that of market discipline. How can you ensure better discipline? The banks needed to disclose certain things to the central banks, be it the risk exposure which they are exposed to, be it the capital adequacy ratio, that is how much capital they are maintaining against their risky assets. So all these things need to be disclosed by the banks to their central banks. If they are disclosing it, if there is transparency, it will help in making sure more better discipline in this banking sector. So these were some pillars of your Basel II norms. Now let's move back to the question and read these statements and identify the incorrect ones. The first one says Basel II framework was based on three pillars comprising of your minimum capital requirements, 
supervisory review and market discipline this is absolutely correct i'll just explain these three pillars to you the second one says basel 2 focused only on credit risk and thus involved maintaining enough capital to deal with this risk although they incorporated this risk but it was not the only risk there were other risks also which they focused upon so this statement is not absolutely correct the third one says it specified that banks have to maintain a capital conservation buffer there was nothing as a uh, capital conservation buffer specified under your basel 2 i will explain this when we will be discussing basel 3 because this was a addition which was made under basel 3 norms so this statement is again incorrect and the last one says basel 2 norms came up in the wake of inefficiencies in existing norms after the global financial crisis after global financial crisis came up your basel 3 norm so basel 2 came up in the year 2004 before this global financial crisis so this statement is again wrong so we had to identify the incorrect ones second third and fourth are incorrect so the answer is option d now let's move on to next question so this question says basel 3 norms focus on the net stable funds rate that requires banks to maintain a stable funding profile and thus fund their activities with the stable sources of finance the minimum requirement is 100% for the same we have to identify the correct statement with respect to the status of india in implementation of this recommended regulation so if i talk about basel 3 basel 3 came up with different suggestions for countries to follow different regulatory framework so one such was a liquidity ratio which was suggested which was the net stable funds rate so they are asking that this rate must be maintained at 100% so whether india has implemented it or not if it has implemented when was this implemented if it has not yet been implemented then when is it going to be implemented in india so if you are going through the uh, the rbi website in the month of february rbi came up with a notification which was related to this only so rbi has maybe postponed the date or may have finalized the date so i'll be discussing about that but before discussing up that let me discuss some basel 3 norms with you so that you can have a clarity about all these things which are actually covered under basel 3 so basel 3 norms basically focused on more better regulation of the banks more better risk management and more better supervision so there are different things which have been suggested like first is the capital adequacy ratio enough capital must be maintained against your risky assets so that uh, the maintenance of tier 1 and tier 2 capital against risky assets when expressed in a ratio is known as the capital adequacy ratio so this ratio has been has to be maintained at 12.9% according to basel 3 norms so 10.5% should be your tier 1 capital and 2% should be your tier 2 capital this is a basically a suggestion which has been made under basel 3 so countries can opt it as it is or they may modify it according to their need second is that the banks should maintain a capital conservation buffer of 2.5% and a counter counter cyclical buffer of 0 to 2.5% so what is this buffer is keeping something in extra so that it can help you at times of need so we have to maintain an additional capital buffer keep more amount of capital with you why whenever you face any kind of financial crisis you can use the capital if you have it in abundance or you have already kept an extra amount so it's it says that banks should maintain a capital in buffer to about to extent of 2.5% which can help them at time of financial crisis moreover there is another term which is the counter cyclical buffer counter cyclical says that when you are facing a good time when the economy is doing really well you are having lot of capital keep more amount of capital at that point in time why it will help you when you are facing a difficulty for example these days covid situation is prevailing so beforehand if countries had were already having some capital in buffer it could have helped them a lot in this period of 
basically it's this kind of a recessionary period so that is when uh, why these buffers are really very useful they will help you at times of financial crunch and help maintain the stability so these are the rates which have been suggested by basel 3 norms other than that the banks are also advised uh, to maintain the leverage rate of 3% this was again not prescribed under the other norms so this says that enough tier 1 capital should be maintained against the assets again it is going if you are having capital it will obviously help you at the time of financial crunch so everything related to maintaining more capital was the agenda over here moreover two new liquidity ratios were introduced so the question also talks about one of them the first one is the liquidity coverage ratio so what is this ratio the ratio is stock of high quality liquidity assets divided by total net cash outflows so you should maintain liquid assets and what kind of liquid assets high quality liquid assets so those liquid assets which can be converted easily when you are at at times you need some money such kind of assets should be maintained with you liquid assets are those which can be easily converted into cash so do maintain high quality uh, such assets because whenever any financial crunch or any such situation arises you can easily convert them into cash and utilize them so here a short term focus was there what they did they identified that what are likely to be the net cash outflows which will happen in next 30 days so in order to deal with those next 30 days you need to maintain some high quality assets so that within these 30 days if you if any kind of need arises of having funds you can sell you can convert these liquid assets into cash and use that cash so this ratio will require banks to hold a buffer of high quality liquid assets which can be sufficient to deal with your cash outflows in case any acute short term stress scenario arises तो अगर शॉर्ट टर्म में कोई भी टाइप की नीड अराइज हुई फंड्स की तो यू कैन यूज दोज लिक्विड असेट्स कन्वर्ट देम एंड यूज देम टू फंड योर ऑपरेशन सो द गोल इज टू इंश्योर दैट बैंक हैव इनफ लिक्विडिटी फॉर अ थर्टी डे प्रेस सिनारियो सो ये पीरियड है विच हैज बीन टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन टू मेंटेन दिस रेशियो सो यू शुड नॉट फेस एनी स्ट्रेस सिनारियो इन दिस थर्टी डे पीरियड इज द अजेंडा ओवर हेयर दिस a uh, ratio was successfully implemented in india in 2019 only then we had another ratio which was suggested which is the net stable fund ratio so this ratio says that you should maintain stable funds vis a vis what is actually the funding which is required so stable funds are actually more reliable you can rely them they are stable so over time they will be providing you with the funding which you need so banks need finance so they should source those funds from such sources on which they can rely which are stable which will continue to provide some funding to the banks over time say for a period of one year so here the objective was to deal with 30 days stress situation here we are actually taking into consideration at least a year horizon okay so this ratio requires banks to maintain stable funding profile it requires banks to fund their activities from where from the stable sources of finance which on which you can rely over the one year horizon so for both these rates at least 100% is the suggestion made 100% ratio should be maintained now talking about whether india is uh, basically following these basel norms or not india is to quite extent following these norms if i talk about basel 3 the equity capital which has been suggested by basel to be followed is 4.5% india is in fact following a higher rate of 5.5% so if we say about india it is having more stringent more stricter norms and that is likely to help in better regulation of our indian banks then uh, talking about the capital conservation buffer 2.5% is the rate which india tries to follow moreover if i talk about the your capital conservation buffer okay 2.5% was the rate which was su suggested so india is trying to follow them see 0.625% was a rate which was yet to be or the capital which was yet to be kept by the indian banks as a buffer it was not actually fully implemented 
so they decided a deadline that they will basically use that uh, or they will basically use that norm and keep that buffer by 30th september 2020 but as you know that that period was a really very really bad period for any country because of covid 19 so there have been a lot of deferment of such provisions so first of all it was delayed that they will maintain this much amount of buffer by april 2021 but further it has been delayed to october 1 2021 now let's see what is going to be the scenario after october 2021 other than that if i talk about your nsfr which was actually asked in this question it is to be maintained at 100 percent so india uh, Indian banks were to follow this from 1st April 2020 but again because of COVID it was deferred to April 2021. Now in Feb 2021 this month only RBI came up with another notification you can check this notification on their website as well so what that notification says it says that because of the ongoing stress of COVID-19 they have further decided to defer the implementation of these guidelines by further six month period. So now it is likely to be implemented in October 2021. So because of COVID, different regulations, different uh, guidelines which have been suggested and had to be actually implemented have been delayed because of such situation. So now if we move back to our question, now uh, this is October 2021. We have to look at the option which says so. So the first one says that India has already implemented it in 2019. No. In April 2020. No. Uh, or it is likely to implement it in May 2021. No. It is likely to implement it in September 2021. No. The answer is option E which says that they are likely to implement it in October 2021 because, and the deferment is because of COVID-19. So the answer is option E. This was all for today's session. It's very important to be aware about such norms, how they are helping your nations in making your system more stronger. So this was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.